Leilani, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you some fine motor skills and activities that you can do with your preschooler and toddler. Now, all of these activities are gonna help build upon their wrist muscles as well as their finger muscles, and it's gonna really help them function in everyday life. So let's start with number one, which is Play-Doh. There is a ton of things that you can do with this little container of Play-Doh. You can push it, you can pull it, you can roll it, you can roll it up into a little ball or a snake, you can squeeze it, you can poke at it, you can try cutting it with little scissors or if you have a little plastic knife, you can roll it out with a rolling pin and of course you can flatten it into a little pancake and try to pull it off the table. Play-Doh is just is completely endless, and that's why I went ahead and just got it out of the way so we can get to some others. <laughs> Good job. Because there are a lot of other things that you can do to help build those fine motor skills, and Play-Doh is obviously the most obvious one. Number two, threading. When it comes to threading, you can thread anything from beads to shapes to threading cards. We like to use these things that came with her papers. Sometimes with younger toddlers and preschoolers that have special needs, threading something is very difficult, especially pinching it. So something that you can use instead of a string or a shoelace is a pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaners are stiff, easy to move into objects, but if you don't want to use a pipe cleaner or if it's just that you want to transition them into using a string, you can use hand over hand. That way the kids see that they're doing it, see how to do it, and they get an idea for what you're wanting them to do. It helps them understand the concept. <laughs> Number three, pegboards. These are great because you are trying to grab an object and place it in a small, tiny hole. This takes a lot of hand-eye coordination and of course fine motor skills. As a bonus, if you get a really cool pegboard, you can work on matching colors, you can work on matching shapes, and you can work on creating and mimicking patterns. It's one of those things that they get to kind of grow into. Number four, any type of twisting toy. Now this could be Jack in the Box, this could be you know those wind-up toys, the smaller, the better, because when you go smaller, you're working smaller muscles, and it's building muscles that don't necessarily get built in those other activities that I mentioned before this. There are so many wind-up toys out there. There's some that jump, there's some that hop, there's some that crawl. You know, get a variety of toys so your kid doesn't necessarily become bored with just one, or maybe they have one in particular that becomes their favorite. And, of course, as a bonus, there's a reward at the end when they wind up that toy. The little thing moves. And for a lot of kids, sometimes that is so satisfying that they just, they wanna do it again. And again, and of course when they do it again, they're building more muscles, so hey, whatever makes it easier for you. <laughs> it also teaches cause and effect, which is something super important to learn in everyday life. You do something, something happens. Number five, stickers. Now stickers, they're pretty much doing it all. They're having to grab the paper, pull the sticker, pinch the sticker first, pull the sticker off the paper, then find out using their hand-eye coordination where on the page they want it, press it down, and of course do the pushing movements. Yeah. Do you want to put it on here? Yeah. Open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Pull. Good job. Now, for a lot of kids, they can get the idea of pushing, but some kids struggle with how much pressure they should push. Is it too much, too little, especially our kiddos that have sensory processing disorder. You don't want them to be pushing too hard or too soft. And with stickers, that can kind of help them gauge the push, the pushing, and even the pulling. Both super important to work on. Now, along the same lines as stickers, I also like to let my kids play with tape. And I know these can get expensive, but you can find the regular tape at the dollar store. I will give her a small piece of tape, and I will just let her play with it. It doesn't really last too long, but if you get it just right, at the right time, this can be just hours 
Maybe not hours, but definitely minutes of fun. And you're working on push-pull. You're working on fine motor skills, pinching, manipulating, and they're having to use their brain because sometimes they get this thing stuck in a certain way and they gotta figure out how to get their hands out of it. So tape, something that simple. But do be careful with the ones that have the little like spikies at the end. They can hurt themselves or cut themselves. So just, you know, keep an eye out for that as well. Number six, the rice bin. All right, let's put the puzzle pieces inside the rice. Now, of course, you can get a rice bin and get some stuff and hide it in the rice bin and let them try and find it. Now, I like puzzles because there's a goal in mind. You want to finish the puzzle, but you can do it with whatever. You could do it with Legos, you can do it with puff balls, little tiny toys as a reward that they can play with or build a model with at the end. Sometimes you can even have those puff balls in the bin of rice and they can pull them out and organize them. You know, you can have a sequence card and they can match the colors with the sequence card. What does a dog say? Yay! Yay, what does a dog say? <laughs> when I do the puzzle with my daughter Naomi, we also like to work on sounds. So we're, we're not only touching on those, you know, fine motor skills, but we're working on our speech therapy. And as a parent, honestly, you gotta get a little bit creative. And it's, and it's good to have videos and resources like this to kind of help you. Number seven, bubble wrap. Don't throw that bubble wrap away. When you get it in the mail, you can use it to help your child with some fine motor skills. These itsy tiny bitsy bubbles are small enough where they can pinch it, but also small enough where they can smash it, jump on it. Both are good for fine motor and gross motor skills. Of course, it's got that pushing thing. They gotta push it. That's really, really hard for my daughter, the pushing part to get it to pop. So we work on that quite frequently. And of course it's cause and effect. Once again, you push on it and it pops. How satisfying is that? Good job. I mean, to be honest, whenever you can find a cause and effect toy where when you manipulate it somehow and then something happens, it's like a win-win. They're gonna wanna keep doing it. Whatever makes it easier, right? Clothes pins. Okay, love, love me some clothes pins. These are the little, little tiny ones that I got from the dollar store for her little tiny fingers, but you know what? The big ones are gonna work different type of strength, and so having both to alternate between is really, really good. A lot of people will sell you these card stocks where you can, you know, maybe color this red and match the red circle and pinch it on, but like really, you can do it with anything. I mean, maybe you have a favorite stack of cards. I would look at this and say, all right, Put it, put it on each side of the hexagon to make a little design. That's fun. Didn't have to buy anything or take time to create it. I just kind of used what I had in front of me. Speaking of cards, using a good old fashioned matching game for those older preschoolers is great because when they're picking up those cards, they're having to get their fingers just right under the card to be able to flip it over and then flip it back over. And of course, that need to find that match is gonna keep them going, keep them motivated to play the game. Of course, you're working with your fine motor skills, but you're also working on their short-term memory. Anything that you can stick Velcro on. Now, I used popsicle sticks at one point where we had Velcro and she just kind of pulled it apart, made shapes with the popsicle sticks. This is also some push and pull as well as fine motor skills. So having a roll of this laying around with a glue gun of some kind so you can attach it to popsicle sticks, to pipe cleaners, you know, whatever works, Velcro is great. Stacking blocks. Now, unless you are an occupational therapist, you probably have no idea how many things are engaged when a child is stacking blocks. You're gonna watch your child move from grabbing the block with their whole hand to their fingers to their two little pincher fingers. Seeing that growth in and of itself is totally awesome. But keep in mind that moving that block from one spot to another takes enormous amounts of hand-eye coordination as well as knowing the right pressure and the right pressure to put down and release the block in order for it to stay on top of a tower and not fall over. However, as a parent, I know you guys can relate, the most challenging part of block playing 
is preventing them from knocking it down. Helping our little kiddos build those fine motor skills and strength in their hands is so incredibly important. But do know the most important way for them to do this is through play. Whether they're playing by themselves, with their siblings, in the form of a game, or with you, that's the only way they're gonna stay motivated to keep doing it. And I think as grown-ups, we can completely relate. When we like something, we keep doing it. So with that being said, don't be afraid to jump in, show them how it's done, laugh, giggle, play, just, just have fun with it, okay? It's gonna make your life easier and it's gonna make things a lot more fun for you and for them. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Our channel is our journey as we homeschool our four children, as well as my youngest who has Down syndrome. I aim to share with you tips, encouragement, support as you come alongside us and journey with us. But please, please share some ideas that you have down in the comment section below. Some fine motor activities, some tricks that maybe I didn't mention here. I love, I honestly love talking to you guys in the comment section. So feel free to engage. And you know what? You are not alone in this whole process. So let's do this thing. Right now, I'm gonna stick some videos around my face from my channel that I think that you guys might enjoy watching. And um, until then, I will see you guys in our next video. Bye. Naomi. The Amazon truck is here, I know. Naomi, shh. Naomi, come on, get another one.